So you're looking to add surrounds to your Sonos setup? Well, let's cover the three key steps in getting the most out of them. By the end of this video, you're gonna know which Sonos products you should use as surrounds, how best to position them, and then how to optimize them in the Sonos app. So if you have a Sonos Beam or a Sonos Arc or any of the other older Sonos TV speakers, and you're looking at upgrading your setup or just wondering if surrounds are worth it, then this video is for you. Let me know in the comments if you find these informational style videos helpful and be sure to click that subscribe button for more. So then guys, why would you want to even add surrounds to your Sonos system in the first place? Well, I'm sure you're all aware of the famous director George Lucas, but he is regularly quoted in saying the sound and music are 50% of the entertainment in a movie. So who are we to argue? Sonos soundbars do sound impressive on their own, but having one box in your room is only going to do so much when it comes to hearing sounds all around you and filling the void between the TV and where you're sitting. When you add a pair of surrounds, the Sonos soundbar that you're using will offload the processing power for those channels and divert all of the surround sound information to the surround speakers, letting the soundbar put more effort into the remaining audio channels and adding a new dimension of immersion as you're put right in the center of the action. The effect is particularly great if you watch a lot of sports where it feels like you're in the stands with the fans or for action movie content where there could be a lot going on like explosions, uh, fighting scenes, driving scenes, aircraft and all sorts. Any other content that you watch that supports Dolby Digital 5.1, Atmos or DTS will play through the surrounds. But the great thing about Sonos is that even if you're watching in stereo or even playing music, it will simulate a surround sound effect as and when it thinks it will benefit. So you can get the most out of the surrounds for all of your content. Now, of course, don't expect the surrounds to always be playing something because some programs just don't support it, like BBC News, for example. You also probably wouldn't want sound to come from the back either in that situation. So that is something to bear in mind. So step number one then, which Sonos speakers should you use as surrounds? Now this is usually quite a straightforward decision for most of you. Nine times out of 10, we would suggest that customers will go for the Sonos One SLs for 358 a pair, because these are nice and compact and provide all you need for a powerful surround sound that's not too overpowered. Now you can get those in black or white and they don't take up too much space either. And when you're adding two more boxes to your setup, this is actually quite important. You might also come across the One Gen 2s and wonder what the difference is. Well, the only difference guys is that the One Gen 2 has Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant built in, whereas the One SL does not. But if you're adding the surrounds to a Sonos soundbar that already has voice control built in, that is the Beam or the Arc, then you'll still benefit from voice control for that zone. So you might as well save yourself the extra 20 pound per speaker on the One SLs and let the soundbar handle the voice control. However, the One Gen 2s still make the perfect option for those who still have older Sonos TV speakers, such as the Sonos Play Bar or Sonos Playbase. Uh, and that's like a little voice upgrade to that zone at the same time. Another option, albeit not quite as popular, is to add a pair of Sonos 5 speakers as rears. Now, you'll notice this speaker is quite a lot larger than the Sonos One SLs, and that's because it just outputs a lot more power than the Sonos Ones, and it is the largest and most powerful speaker in the Sonos lineup. Now, the only times I'd recommend using 5s as your surrounds is if your seating position is quite a distance from your TV. I'm talking at least about seven meters away, which isn't gonna be a very common setup, or you're just trying to fill a very, very large space. Now we do get asked, but won't I get a much better experience uh, with the fives rather than the ones? And the answer overall is yes, it will offer a more immersive, powerful experience as the speaker is more capable sonically. So if you do just want the best that Sonos can offer right now, then the fives might be right for you. For me personally though, I think that the extra 320 pounds per speaker is a lot of additional budget. And for my home, it's definitely not needed. But this does come down to the space you have, your budget, and ultimately the experience that you're after. The final option for Sonos Surrounds is using the Sonos Amp to power a set of speakers of your choice. Now that could be a pair of in-ceiling speakers, Sonos in-ceiling if you wanted to keep with the brand, uh, you've got in-wall speakers, floor standing speakers, or bookshelf speakers, and as long as you're connected up to the Sonos Amp, you can use any brand you like for those. More and more commonly now, we're seeing customers explore built-in options where the speakers are built into the wall or ceiling cavity to give a nice flush effect while still benefiting from great surround sound. If you're choosing between in-ceiling and in-wall speakers as surrounds, my first port of call would be in-wall speakers because then the speakers would be positioned at listening height. 
But if this isn't practical and you're still after a built-in look, then in-ceiling will also be fine. I will just point out though that for surround channels, in-ceiling speakers will offer a slightly different experience as it will feel more like the sounds are coming from above rather than behind. Just something to bear in mind. And unfortunately, it is not possible at the time of filming this video to use any of the Sonos portable speakers as your surround. So the Sonos Roam, the Roam SL and the Sonos Move cannot be used as the rear channels. Now this is something that we would be really keen for Sonos to add in a software update in the future, but right now it is not possible. So now that you've decided on the product that you want to use for surrounds, now let's talk a little bit about positioning them in the best place. So let's head over to our Sonos Arc Lounge um, as part of the showroom. So as you can see, uh, we've got our surrounds um, about a foot away from the listener's head height. They are not angled in, they are angled perpendicular to the TV. And that is because we have enough space behind the sofa to do that. So if you have the space to do it, then this is probably the most optimum effect. But I appreciate that not all of you are gonna have space behind um, the sofa. So let's head on back to the Sonos Beam Lounge because what we've done is recreate um, maybe like an apartment or whatever, whatever building that you've got where there's a wall and your sofa is against the wall. What we've had to do is put the surrounds sort of to the side of the sofa and then to counteract that, because obviously you're not gonna to want to have the speaker directly uh, facing the TV, because then the surrounds will just go straight back to the TV and you won't get that full effect. We've tilted them a little bit, not, not much, just a touch, about 20 degrees towards the listener, um, just so you don't miss out on any of the action. Also, you might be in a situation where your sofa isn't even directly onto the TV. So you, your sofa might be an angle to your TV or you might even have multiple sofas around your TV in like a U shape. What I'd suggest doing then is choosing your main sofa. So that might be the one directly in front of your TV or as straight on as possible. And then positioning the surrounds behind that. The key is that you focus on the main sofa. And as you can see, we've also got this surround on floor stands. Now, these are actually place them at the ideal listening height at one meter, um, but you can also get adjustable stands. Uh, I know Flexon do them and they can adjust the, uh, the height of the stand from 0.7 meters to about 1.3 meters, not including the speaker. Um, also, you don't necessarily have to have floor stands. I mean, this room might have been convenient for wall mounts, so you could have a pair of wall mounted surrounds, but do uh, keep in mind um, that you wanna get wall mounts that you can pivot slightly downwards so the sound is not just firing directly above your head. You can also get handy five meter extension cables. So if you need some extra reach to get to your closest power socket, then I think you can get those for about 15 pounds. Um, the link to all of our accessories will be in the description below so you can see what's available to you and how you, how you can get your room to work with surrounds. In 99% of cases, you can add surrounds. It just needs a bit of thought and a bit of planning. And if you have a particularly odd shaped room um, and one that you'd like us to check uh, with the team and see what we'd recommend, then do get in touch. We'd be more than happy to help. Right, we're on to the final step now, step three, which is now that you've got your surrounds positioned where you want, how can you make sure you're getting the most out of them? Well, I would highly recommend delving into the Sonos app, make sure you're running the latest software, and this is the Sonos S2 app that I'm gonna be showing, so things might look different if you're running S1 with some of the older Sonos products. Firstly, make sure you true play your speakers. Now this is where the Sonos app uses an Apple device and test tones to analyze the shape and the layout of your room to acoustically tweak and optimize your setup for your surroundings. Now once you've done that, then I'd suggest having a quick play around with the surround sound settings so you can get the best experience for you. So you wanna to head to settings, then tap system, then tap your room with the surrounds, scroll down to surround audio, and here is your menu where you can actually turn the surrounds off and on. This TV level slider is to increase the volume of the surrounds themselves when you're watching TV. Now I would use this with a bit of caution because you don't want them to overpower the soundbar. So I would recommend not setting this to more than two or three if you want a little boost from your surrounds. Music level will increase the volume of the surrounds when you're listening to music. Now, I would tend to keep this on the default because of this setting just below, which is this music playback. And you can see that there are two options. So you've got ambient and you've got full. So this refers to when you're playing music, not TV, and what sort of level you want your surrounds to be when you're listening to that music. 
So if you want them to remain at an ambient level, choose ambient, but I actually changed mine to full because what this means is when you're listening to music, the surrounds will play as a full volume stereo pair at the same volume as the soundbar. And then it will switch to an ambient level when you're watching TV as they should do for surrounds. You'll also see this surround distance setting so you can tell Sonos how far your surrounds are from your seating position. Now that you've already true play tuned the system, this option will be greyed out here because you will already have told Sonos where your surrounds are in relation to your seating position and it will have optimized it already. But if you're not able to run true play for whatever reason, like perhaps you don't have an Apple device, you still have a certain amount of optimization here, which is great. And that is all the optimization you need, guys. You should now find that your setup sounds great in your space and it's nicely balanced for music and movies. So that is everything you need to know about adding surrounds to your Sonar setup. Before you go, you might also be wondering whether to add the sub as well, or you may be torn between adding a sub or the surrounds first with your budget. Well, that's gonna be different for everyone, but as the beam and the arc are both quite powerful on their own, I would actually advise adding surrounds before you add the sub, not least because by adding them, they're half the cost of the sub gen three. The sub is great to add when you're wanting to add that finishing layer to your cinema, but let us know, guys. If you want us to cover that question in more detail, drop a comment. For now, if you could drop us a like or a dislike below to show me if you'll be adding surrounds or whether you already have them or not, leave a comment on your thoughts about surrounds in general. See you guys in the next video.